We're here at Fort James, St. John's, Antigua. This fort was constructed in 1736 for defense of the island and the city of St. John's, and let's check her out. The fort is constructed of masonry. It still has some cannons remaining. Here's the main entrance to the fort. Original hinges on the main entrance. As we enter the fort, we have a blockhouse here, which I believe will be the magazine. We'll check that out. Here's a look at the blockhouse. Masonry construction, stone roof. Let's see if we can get inside. Has some vegetation growing out of it. Here we go, here's an entry point. And going inside, I hope you all can see. Yeah, we can see here some. This I believe would have been the powder magazine for sure. Arch ceiling. It's surprising how cool it is in here. Got a vent up here at the top. The shelf, I don't know if that would have been a question that that's from the 1700s, but perhaps. I think that's newer construction. These holes in the top are quite interesting. Here's more of the exterior of the blockhouse. And it has a another masonry structure here. Check out what this is. Perhaps another powder store. Here's one of the cannons that remain. This is an 18 pound gun made of iron construction. The defense of the island of Antigua was the responsibility of the locals rather than of England itself, even though it was a colony. So many of the guns here are of iron construction rather than a bronze because it was cheaper to do iron guns as opposed to the bronze guns that you'll see in a lot of forts. You have the crown of King George, I believe. The other trunnion has some markings on it. Check out this brick archway bridge. Kind of cool. This is going into another structure of the fort. Coming inside, we have a staircase and a more modern construction. Pretty sure this would have been from World War II defense. Lots of structures up here that are modern. So in World War II, many of these old forts were put into use to defend from the Germans. And they modernized the original structures. Let's check out inside one of these buildings. You just imagine British soldiers here manning the guns to defend the harbor against any potential German incursions. The Graf, Graf Spey uh, operated in the Caribbean until it was taken out and it was just so many unknowns of what would have happened. You could just imagine what was going through the minds of the soldiers that were here. Back to the original construction. Have some more guns. 
quite a few as a matter of fact let's check these out see what size they are check out the trunnion markings wc marked on that one have the king's crest and the weight no actually that's number 982 i believe that says on that trunnion sometimes they'll put the weight there carriage it's marked 24 26 b and it says it's a 24 pounder no markings on the muzzle next cannon in line has a wc appears to be the same size as the first one we just looked at this is number 455 coming down the line this one has a different inspector's mark or foundry I need to verify that with my British artillery. That's marked with an L. King's Crest again. All these are the same pattern, it looks like. Number 41. Then we come up to another one. This one is marked with some numbers, 1805, Caron, C-A-R-R-O-N. So I imagine the Islanders would have put out bids to different companies to get uh, the lowest bid on these. This one says it's a 18 pounder. Next we come to another Caron. This one's from 1805. King's Crest again. I just love these old cannons. This one is another 18 pounder. Then we come up to another WCCO. I believe that's company most likely. King's Crest. All these carriages are marked 24 pound, but it seems like all the cannons themselves are 18 pounders. This one's marked 986. Let's see if the muzzle has any markings. Nope, no mu markings on the muzzle. Here's the view from the fort of the main harbor coming into St. John's. Have a few more guns to check out. This is another WC. Not in as good a shape as well. Here comes another one. This one's marked with an L on the left trunnion. Has the crown. And number 33. Off in the distance we have another, but down here we also have another block of house we'll check out. It's probably a good 30 foot drop off down to the coast. This would be hard to penetrate this fort from a longboat. All right, this gun is another WC, which I believe is company. Gonna have to try and figure out what that is. Royal Crest, number 647, and most likely no markings on the muzzle. Nope. We do have a couple tick marks in here, which I wonder what those were for. This one might've been used for sighting. It's at the top, maybe for leading a ship. I'm not sure. I just love looking at these things. Here's the edge of the fort after that last cannon. And there's a blockhouse we'll check out. This I believe is the most substantial fort on the island and would have come at considerable expense. This looks like a powder store. Has an arched roof made of bricks. Looking inside, has a spot to hand out the powder. Very cool.
from the inland side, it looks like we have either some more gun emplacements. Let's check this out. Yeah, I believe this would have been a gun emplacement with that triangular setting, but maybe for uh, personnel protection, because this is facing the inside of the harbor. There's another right here next to it. Same construction. And there's an old abandoned seafood restaurant that they put as part of the fort or built on the uh, on the foundation. Bar and seafood. This place probably would have been rocking back in the 50s, 60s, I would imagine. Just the stories this could tell as opposed to the fort. One thing I have noticed about Antigua, they're not really good about taking out the trash. Here's a look at the deck from the abandoned restaurant. This, I believe, would have been originally part of the fort's construction. I can't see a restaurant putting this kind of money into a deck. Costs a lot to move stone and build things like this. Still kind of neat. Whether it's an abandoned restaurant or part of, the, of an old fort. Now, of course, the wooden construction would have been, uh, I would imagine, 50s, 60s, possibly from the 70s. Just a beautiful setting. But just imagine those defenders of Antigua looking out, being fearsome of French warships approaching and invading the island. Here's a look at that sheer cliff that we looked at earlier. This is from the water side. That would be hard to penetrate. All right, I hope you all like this video. Really uh, appreciate you watching and uh, hope you check out some of the other videos. I'll put a link to a playlist of uh, my different history style videos at the end of this. And uh, thanks again. Let me know any questions you have.